this is the brand new Isuzu MUX. And it's not only the front over there that might look unfamiliar to you MUX fans over there. No, this is a all new Isuzu MUX. So new in fact that even the engine under this bonnet is an upgrade. Let's find out a little bit more about the new kid on the block. The styling is relatively conservative with these smooth swooping lines. Even these lights over here look a little bit uh, Toyota-esque, but I like it. The MUX has one neat little trick at the back here, and that is that this is a plastic cover, which means that when you open the boot lid over here, the action is very, very light. And speaking of boot, once those seats are folded down at the back there, this section is gigantic for storing all sorts of big things. At the front, you've got USB, AUX, and 120 volts. The seats so far feel very comfortable, even though I haven't driven the car much. And the steering also very nice and modern, thanks to some leather trim over there and all the necessary buttons on the steering wheel over here. This car's got traction control, it's got hill climb, descent, and a host of other safety features. And depending on which model you go for, up to eight airbags available as well. The Suzu MUX hasn't failed to surprise me as yet. These interesting lines and designs here are reminiscent of cars a lot more premium. The MUX actually has a separate control unit for the rear passengers, giving the rear users much more control over the um, climate. In the back you get climate control. Over here you've got lights there, more vents and two USBs at the back. A bit unfair considering the front passengers and driver only get one between them. Seating at the back is adequate, not the biggest in class, but there is over enough headroom and legroom, all things considered. Of course, this is a seven-seater, and again, the back seats more for uh, kids or smaller adults. It really does look quite good from the front, doesn't it? I do like this angle of those lights over there, single LEDs. The gigantic grill is completely different from before. And I think considering that Isuzu has had a bit of a tumultuous past with its relationship to Opel and Opel leaving, I think to differentiate themselves, this was a very good move on a very good car. This one over here has got the 17 inch wheels, but you can go all the way up to 20 inches depending on which model you go for. You've also got a whole bunch of safety features available across the range, but as mentioned, the big change is underneath that bonnet over there. So this engine over here is the brand new three liter engine, and it's up a whopping 10 kilowatts, but more importantly, 70 newton meters. So it's now on 140 kilowatts and 450 newton meters of torque, right up there with the class leaders. Now, the only thing left to do is to take this car for a spin and see what it's like on the road. The MUX is, in my mind, a very underrated car. Even the old one, because we all thought it was more bucky than car, which it was. But this new model has Isuzu making a lot of changes, and they needed to make these changes to stay competitive with the Toyota and the Ford. Even though sales for the Isuzu were not looking bad at all, Toyota and Ford were running away on the sales charts. But now, with this new and improved version, you've got something that's a lot more car, and a lot less bucky. Yes, it still has a relatively loud diesel, but this time, wow. <laughs> wow, it's got a lot more torque. Whoa, a noticeable amount more. 70 Newtons to be exact, and I drove the outgoing D-Max just last week. And uh, although that one only has 10 kilowatts less, this feels like an entirely new power plant, a lot more refined, and a lot more powerful. Oh, yeah, really. And that's great news for Isuzu fans because now finally, all that reliability, that hardiness that we've come to know and love from Isuzu, doesn't have to end with the conversation that I know the Toyota has more power. It's got a six-speed gearbox that changes pretty effortlessly. It's a standard automatic version, but 
I'm not really noticing any differences here. You don't get paddles at the back, but who needs paddles on a bucky anyways? See, I called it a bucky. This of course isn't a bucky, it's an SUV. And an SUV in the truest sense, because you can't fit seven entire people in this people carrier. This one over here has seven airbags, but depending on spec, you could get up to eight airbags. And that's a big deal, especially nowadays where safety is such a massive concern. Isuzu is one of the few brands that actually develops cars for the local market. Like this little diff lock button over there is something that's specifically for South Africa. The tires, the way the suspension works, all of these things are tested right here in South Africa, which makes this the perfect car for the southern tip of Africa. It is possible to get the claimed figure of 7.6 liters per 100. I'm cruising around at about nine at the moment, but there's plenty more fuel to be saved. Time to hit the open road. And another chance to feel all that torque in action. Oh. And there is a lot of it. And even now at 100 kilometers an hour, acceleration is still pretty brisk. This is not a bad car at all. And it's certainly not a slow one either. Isuzu have always been able to make the most of the power that they have. They've always been a little bit down on power compared to their competitors, but it always felt like there was enough power to move the car along. And now with this extra torque in this one, it certainly does feel that there's more than enough at the moment. Steering is responsive and light. And now that we're on a decently long road, I can feel that the gears still work really well. Very comfortable car to drive. Very supple as well. And unlike some of its competitors, not very bouncy either. I think the development on this car has been extensive because although the previous MEX wasn't bad, it certainly wasn't as good as this. Visibility all around is good with big rear view mirrors everywhere. You can also see exactly what the kids are up to at the back if you need to. At first glance, the infotainment system looks like it has a very big screen, but I do think the top spec one makes full use of this section over here. You've got a little digital dash section in the middle here, flanked by the regular dials, and this is something that I quite prefer myself. If you're going to do digital dials, you better do it properly, and many manufacturers don't. So a good old-fashioned clock on the dash, I'm happy with that. Time to overtake again. Yes. Overtaking in this car is an absolute pleasure because of all that torque. And diesel engines nowadays have been getting smaller and smaller. You've got Ford with a little 2 liter and Toyota with a 2.8. This is a good old fashioned 3 liter diesel, just like the Bucky Gods intended it to be. Okay, turning circle on the MUX. Let's see. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Oh, one turn. One turn on our scientific turning circle testing facility in a side road in Brunswick. Ah! Wow. <laughs> it really pulls very, very fast. The Isuzu comes with a five year, 120,000 kilometer warranty and a five year, 90,000 kilometer service plan. But judging from Isuzu's history, I don't think you're going to be needing that warranty. These things tend to last forever. It's one of the reasons so many South Africans buy Isuzu's. And if you've ever been to the northern part of the country where most of these are sold, ask any farmer there about his Isuzu Bucky, whether it's the 2019 model or the 2000 model, both of them are still working perfectly. This model of here does not have Isuzu's IDAS function, which is automatic braking and lane keep assist and a whole bunch of other safety features. That is available on the top spec Onyx model. But speak to the guys at my ride and maybe they can source you one of those if that's what you're after. All models in the MUX range come with the same engine, but not all of them come with four wheel drive. This one over here is two wheel drive and the big selling point on some of its competitors is that they're very good off road. Now we know the Isuzu is also good off-road, but I'm not gonna get stuck in a two-wheel drive Isuzu. I gotta say these seats are exceptionally comfortable and very, very supportive. Seating position is good, and almost perfect, and whew, this interior is really nice too. Not too many hard plastics around, and 
the sections that are soft are really nice to touch. I definitely think that Ford and Toyota have themselves a new competitor. Having said that, when it comes to the actual car itself and a like-for-like -like comparison, I think in many ways this is better than the Fortuner. Let me start by saying that two of my favorite cars in the world are Toyotas, the Supra and the GR Yaris. But when it comes to the Fortuner, I'm not that big of a fan. I think it sells because of its name. And that means that there is space for a good competitor to come along. Is this the good competitor? The answer to that question, folks, is yes. Home to Nissan, Hyundai, Isuzu, Renault, JSC, FAW and multi-franchise branches, including the MyBucky brand, MyRide Group is your one-stop shop for all your motoring needs in the Western Cape and Gauteng. Visit myride.co.za to see what they're all about.